Moving forward, in 2007, IBM, Google, and several universities have joined forces in order to develop a server farm. The goal of the farm was research projects which needed both fast processors and huge data sets. The University of Washington was the first to sign up in order to use, adopt different resources provided by IBM and Google. Carnegie Mellon University, or MIT, Stanford University, University of California at Berkeley, University of Maryland, all those universities quickly followed the example. They immediately realized computer experiments can be done faster and cost efficient. If IBM and Google were supporting their research, of course, since much of the research was focused on different issues and problems IBM and Google had interest in, in they also benefited from this common arrangement. 2007 was also the year when Netflix launched its stream video service using the cloud that provided support for practice of Bing watching. Moving forward, of course, we can say that in 2008, Eucalyptus offered the first AWS API compatible platform. This was used for distributing private clouds. In the same year, the NASA or NASA Open Nebua provided the first open source software which could deploy private and hybrid clouds. Many of its most innovative features were focused around the need of major businesses which brought a lot of popularity and interest, interest into the product. In 2011, IBM introduced the Smart Cloud framework. This was made in support of Smarter Planet, which is a cultural thinking project. Apple, of course, back then, launched the iCloud right after. This focuses on storing more personal information. We're talking about videos, music, photos, etc. Also, during the same year, Microsoft began with the advertisement of cloud on television. This made the general public really, really aware of its availability uh, in order to store videos, photos, and all kinds of information that could be easily accessed. At the same time, it's uh, supposedly safe out there and it's cost efficient for the users, of course. Easy to manage, easy to deploy, easy to use. Oracle introduced the Oracle Cloud in 2012 that offered um, basically the three main or fundamental basics for businesses. 
And here we will mention again the IaaS or Infrastructure as a Service, PaaS or Platform as a Service, and ASaaS, uh, which stands for Software as a Service. Moving forward, what can we expect from the cloud? A customer using a public cloud service could have three main expectations. The first one will be that customers can rent the services instead of purchasing hardware, going through all the trouble of uh, getting the software as well, installing it, configuring it and all that in order to accomplish the same end goal. Second thing, the vendor is completely responsible for all the administration, maintenance, capacity planning, troubleshooting, backups, security, all those good stuff, you kind of outsource it to someone else, which can actually bring an issue because you're trusting everything to that third party. Obviously working with the main big three vendors, we're kind of, having this feeling of being safe since all the, those big companies really supposedly they care about the security they have huge security teams they do their pen test and uh, compliance and they have a complex vulnerability management programs they have incident response programs uh, they have all the the needed parts of the puzzle in order to uh, defend in the most efficient way our information stored on their servers. Just keep in mind that if we're talking about best security possible, we should definitely think of pros and cons. What can we do in order to defend, protect, maintain, and uh, scale our server in-house and what is actually being done and how can we control what's being uh, done in order to secure our information on the cloud. So kind of you can sit down, compare both, compare pros and cons and see which one works best for you. Of course, there is not a simple answer to the question either to use or not to use cloud services, but you can definitely estimate and do a research yourself in order to get to the right answer. And finally, for uh, many business projects, it is uh, simply a lot faster and way easier to use the cloud services. It comes with uh, enormous amount of storage, the ability to manage multiple projects and uh, huge availability to variety of various users at the same time, simultaneously. There are essentially two different types of public clouds. One usually serves users for a personal use. And the other one would serve businesses. Cloud computing storage, which is used for personal use, allows easy access to file sharing Data stored on the cloud, such as pictures, music, videos, um, can be in documents, of course, can be shared with friends using smartphone or uh, just a laptop while protecting personal data from loss and damage, which is another beneficial part of the cloud computing. The services offered by the business cloud, of course, are quite different and they're meant to serve 
all the different needs that medium, large, and even small businesses have. Moving forward, we'll talk a little more about the security behind the cloud computing. And we can say that by 2014, cloud computing had developed its fundamental basic features and security definitely became a primary focus uh, to all the vendors. The, the tons of information stored on the cloud was uh, and it still is a huge target for hackers. All those data stored out there and accessible throughout the internet remotely is uh, a huge bait and a, a huge target uh, for all the criminals, in, uh, cyber criminals out there. That's why vendors have put a lot of effort and are currently putting a lot of effort in uh, securing all the information stored on their servers. Here we're talking about physically securing the data center, following all the best practices about access control mechanisms, about CCTV cameras, uh, being able to um, have a full visibility into the uh, data center. Uh, we're talking about different access levels, processes, procedures, all the main parts and layers of a physical security system. And other than that, talking about the logical part of things uh, they take good care about blocking things using firewalls ips ids uh, segregating different partitions since a lot of users are having uh, their accounts and uh, setting up uh, three factor authentication checking the access level of different users, looking to password complexity and making sure to alert about any suspicious activity of users logging in from different parts of the world. Something that's unusual as far as tactics or uh, just regular user activity, something that's outside the norm, should be flagged and taken care of right away. Having said that, security is and may also be and always be the primary concern of uh, most and all cloud users. Private clouds, currently, businesses can develop a private cloud system which is perfectly designed for their particular needs. Those private clouds store all sensitive data internally within the company and it could be accessed by all the users that have the specific needed access rights. Much of the modern businesses, business consumer market relies on cloud services. Private cloud computing is uh, currently widely used for email to log in on online gaming platforms and of course for different social media websites. Private clouds are basically 
um, data center, which are used mainly of the basic cloud technologies, which is using many of those cloud. Private clouds offer all the advantages of a public cloud, but have the advantage to control security and all the different privacy concerns. Over the time, public cloud computing companies who are intensely competitive are actually expand, will expand for sure their scalability and would lower prices in order to stay ahead of the market. Many private cloud owners most likely um, will not be able to keep up after having invested a small fortune in their own systems, of course. One must add to the equation the Amazon Web Services cloud outage, causing cloud websites to become inaccessible as well or difficult to work with. For several hours that also happens from time to time and it's con worth considering it must also be understood a private cloud could suffer the same kind of problem quite possibly uh, and the uh, outage uh, would most likely last longer because of the lack of so many resources that the big vendors provide. Keeping all this information in mind, guys, we're going to be moving forward with our next video. Thanks for watching.